Hello and welcome to Disney vs. Marvel! JC Squeeze It Everything Edition. Let me just make sure my volume's up loud enough. Yep, it's good. Um, this is the run where I squeeze everything. You've been warned. This is the beginning of a three round series of battle royales before the personal scores are settled. Let's see how it plays out. We begin with. Well, I am a ghoul. Well, GA doing his uh, I am a ghoul voice. It is <laughs> awesome and a little hilarious. Not like in the he's bad hilarious, but in the way like he's nailed the way a ghoul talks. It's funny. Hilarious. Um. Yeah, he's bargaining for the Book of Cartoon, which Facilier had. Because every time Mosenrath opened that thing in the past- Okay, I gotta, I gotta pause before we go on. Every time Mosenrath opened that thing in the past, it's worked out so well. Uh, yeah, I'm actually pausing here because I need uh, to finish up my comments about that scene before I comment on this scene. Um, yeah, I feel like that alliance is like a joke in uh, Disney vs. not Disney Villains world. Um, so a member of the Sorcerer Society, a member of the Animal Cruelty Squad, and Dr. Facilier walk into a bar. Yeah. Okay, um, G.A. had been bragging for a while that he might do a cameo of a villain that was not Disney or Marvel. This is about to become the Battle of New York. As Loki arrives to take over the city, you'll notice a very familiar citizen Stopping to take note of the chaos. That is Jim Moriarty from BBC Sherlock, and that's the best thing ever. Because Loki and Moriarty, this is the closest thing we'll have to them actually interacting in Disney vs. Marvel, as well as Moriarty and Regina. All right, this battle is so epic. Like, I can't even handle how epic. I mean, you've got every important player of the live-action realm, plus the, uh, Guardian from Asgard's Treasure Room turning up in New York. Korag's returned. He wants revenge. Everyone gets a part. Everyone has something to do. And Necroli has sexy boots. She and Drake Stone, she can keep who has best shoes. Um, so we have Jadis' forces are being taken on, and it's Literally a fantasy versus sci-fi ultimate showdown brawl here. Just they fight off the Chitauri. Cal is given a level up as his new final form is that of his father's previous monster form. Ah, oh, those edits between Korag and Loki. Uh, some people say blurry, dizzying. I say they're just cut together. It looks Perfect. It actually looks like they're striking blows on each other. Oh, I cannot get over this cow thing! It's just like the most awesome thing! I wish that had happened in canon. Like, imagine Marnie trying to say, I'm not afraid of you to that. Of course, all Blackheart has to do is kick him in the face, and that works. Just Blackheart. You don't want Blackheart to kick you in the face. I'm bringing the party to you! And Korag's like, I don't see how that's a party. I've made that joke every single time I have talked about this round. Everyone's probably sick of it. So then Korag goes into his one-winged angel form. Now we have a giant mech fighting the giant ships. And, and one has to wonder, like, is Moriarty just observing, thinking, What is doing all this? Oh, they're good. They're very good. Send the rest. And in come the rest of the parties. And look at this! You thought Winifred Sanderson was awesome when she melted Abigail's face off? Now, she's going to strike down Chitauri battleships by pointing at them! Are you scared yet, Loki? Do you know exactly what you're messing with now? He's got the Guardian on his side, though. Corella goes for a rematch with Bullseye with that pitchfork. 
Remember when she stabbed Freddy Krueger with it in Disney vs. Non-Disney Villains? We now need to make a meme about Cruella and her pitchfork because it gets better. I honestly thought at first that um, Cruella was going to die that way. Like, he was going to say that, that pit was acid. That scene was also brilliantly edited. But no, uh, I was pleasantly surprised that you'll see what happens with Cruella in a minute here. Okay, so we got a nuke the Guardian. Cal's got that. And Cruella gets up. Finding what's holding the portal open. And she uses the pitchfork, shut off the Tesseract, and kill all the Chitauri. If that isn't... Oh my god! I can't even handle! That's so awesome! We'll actually be coming back to that fight. Over 50% of this round is the Battle of New York. Um, here's the Battle of Value. And Belladonna is seeking revenge for her dead boyfriend. I wish I could say more about this fight, but I don't know, um... I don't know, uh, the characters in the Marvel side of this as well. I'm actually kind of, uh... There's one moment in here that I'm sure is really great, but the effect's lost on me because I don't know who it is, and I kind of feel bad about that. Um... Because I know to a Marvel fan, it must be absolutely awesome. Then I am a ghoul shows up. This for this alliance, I still want to see these three walk into a bar. And here comes the scene. Belladonna summons this spirit who looks ultimately awesome, and I'm sure is like some absolute powerhouse in the Marvel universe. And just blew up Medusa's gun, like, her favorite thing in the universe. But Dr. Facilier way overpowers her. And for all that she went through trying to get revenge for Gambit dying, Belladonna dies, and I, I feel really bad for her, actually. Xanatos challenges the fake Xanatos. See if Xanatos can take his powers back from Ultron with the help of the Redemption Squad. But they have, uh, I keep calling them Synthodrones. I keep thinking it's impossible. Synthozoids, that's what they're really called. Of the Avengers, which is kind of a cool little cameo, um, to see, uh, evil versions of, you know, the Avengers. I don't think I can explain how cool that is beyond saying evil versions of the Avengers. But they're taken out relatively easily. Now this, unlike Belladonna, is where you actually get some satisfaction out of a character's arc and journey to get back what is rightfully theirs. I may have said too much. So, Xanatos is now weak. It's looking grim. He could die. Uh oh, what's gonna happen now? What could possibly save him? What else but pot? And do you honestly think there is any way that Ultron is going to win? Let's party. <laughs> I love that battle cry! It's not really a cry. It's like Ultron's starting to reform himself. No, I can't let that happen! I can't let that happen! Nope! Nope! Sending you out into space! 
Don't bother coming back! No one loses to Puck. I mean, no one went. Puck loses to no one is what I meant. Oh. 